58 degrees, just a slight two mile an hour breeze and a UV index of three. This is absolutely critical. That is right. This direct exposure to midday sun could be increasing her risk to melanoma. It looks like she's making a change. Yeah, she's putting that putter back in the bag. Now let's see what she takes out. Oh, wow. It looks like she's pulling out a 15. I don't know. It looks like she's going with a 30. Strong choice. She's going to want to use the recommended SPF 30 even on a cloudy day. And notice how she's using broad spectrum sunscreen. And a generous amount, too. Incredible. That was a masterful performance. That was pretty good, too. Stand up to cancer and Optum want to help you reduce your risk for cancer. Visit TakeAHealthyStand.org. 1033 The Goat. Yeah, that's the one. K277 TQ Lafayette, 1420 KPEL Lafayette. The rumors are true. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Dave Schultz and Sports Chat are back. I'm back, baby! I'm back! One change, though. I'm sorry, that deal's now off the table. What? We live in a different world than we did just 30 seconds ago. Instead of waking you up, he's taking you home from work. Hey, Dad, you want to have a catch? I'd like that. Talking Cajuns, Tigers, Saints, all of it. I am your father. Buckle up, Acadiana. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! It's time for Sports Chat with Dave Schultz on 103.3 The Goat. Another slow news day in the dog days of summer. As if Dave Schultz, Linda Burton on a Thursday afternoon sports chat, 103.3 The Go. Great show for you today. Continue to preview the uh, football teams around the area. We got Seth Lewis coming on. He was at Raging Cajuns Media Days. We'll get his take on that. Uh, Alan Blondin will uh, we'll take, uh, <clears throat> we'll go to the coast. Excuse me. We'll go to uh, the South Carolina coast. Little Conway, South Carolina. We'll talk about those Chanticleers that everybody around here loves so much. Zach Blobner from WDAE. We'll talk about Tampa Bay. You know, everybody is like the Saints in the South, but watch out for Carolina. They're really not that way about Tampa Bay just yet. And we're hearing, I mean, they're having, these guys are having difficulties throwing against air. Yeah. So I'm, that's that's not great Oof, for that. Poor Baker yeah. Mayfield, the fall from grace. Yeah, and I thought he was going to be good, Hopefully too. he saved... Uh, Hopefully he saved, whatchamacallit, hopefully he saved his progressive money. Yeah, All or right. his Hulu money. All right. Mm. Uh, and we may have Carolina. We'll see. I just got a text message we'll see in the break. We have Jeff Cameron coming on from War Chant. He's going to talk about Florida State here in about 15 minutes. Okay. So where are we right now? All right. As we're going to talk about college football realignment. It, again, it maybe take me a couple of minutes, right? I didn't get to the Rose Bowl yesterday until Lyndon said something. <laughs> so um, it, it hit me a little bit later on and saw some other people's tweets about this, but it is a little bit ironic, right? And incredibly hypocritical when all of these college administrators, coaches, 80s, conference commissioners are like, oh my God, NIL is just going to ruin college football. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, they get a free education. Oh no, these guys are going to make it ten grand or twenty thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars or hundred grand. That's going to stop money from flowing into our pockets. All right, Florida State has come out and said our thirty million dollars ain't good enough. We need more. Jeez, the twenty or so million dollars that the Pac twelve was negotiating wasn't good enough. Right, like the Big Ten's getting like seventy, the SEC gets like sixty. And you can't keep up with the Joneses. And so these guys are, it's a flat out money grab. Flat out money grab. Don't tell me about the pageantry of college football when the presidents and the ADs are behind all of these moves into conferences because of the money. Don't tell me it's not because of the money when it's because of the money. 
that's the hilarious part of this whole thing is, you know, people are ready to blame the kids. And again, Lyndon, you just can't, I mean, you can't get the Supreme Court of the United States to agree that it's Thursday. Meanwhile, on anything important, and it was a 9 nothing decision when the NIL deal came down through the Supreme Court. And so now here we are with the Pac-12. I mean, the Pac-12 may not last until Friday. Jeez. We're waiting for Arizona State now, apparently. Arizona wants to be in go mode, but they're doing their brethren a favor by holding out for Arizona State. So now Arizona State is holding out. for Arizona State's got a meeting for tonight. Meanwhile... You do have, let me see here. I saw Utah. Today I saw someone report that Utah's trying to get to the Big 12 now. So we haven't heard from Utah yeah. uh, so far, okay? Watch, I'll pull up what I saw a reporter reported on it, and I was like, ooh, let me make a note of this. I, I, yeah, I have not heard from Utah uh, just yet, all right? But we have heard from maybe Oregon and Washington going to the Big 10. Okay, so... Uh, um, so it's being said right now that Utah's oh, – hold on. Let me find a more credible all right, person. All right, so this is Jim Williams from D.C., whatever. Again, it's on Twitter, so it must be real. Okay, the Pac-12 media deal with Apple TV is on the table. By the way, it's only on the, t- it's only on the table for the rest of the week. If the Pac-12 doesn't take this media deal, there's not another one coming. <laughs> Apple TV is going all take it or leave it. Arizona and ASU could be going to the Big 12 later today. Utah – uh, I guess that's the Big Ten is talking about adding Cal, Stanford, Oregon, and Washington. The ACC is talking to ESPN about eight Pac-12 schools and FSU wants out of the ACC. Why doesn't the ACC call up Notre Dame and say, why don't you come over here? They should. That would be the easy solution for everybody, right? If they went and got Notre Dame, then they can go back to ESPN and say, let's get a little bit more money. Mm-hmm. And then everybody's happy. Because despite what I think about Notre Dame, Notre Dame is a national brand. Yeah, it is. Notre Dame is a national brand. I'm not sure how many other schools like that. Although some schools like USC, Texas, Alabama, I mean Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, right? And they have some widespread alumni across the nation. But Notre Dame is a religious thing. It's a heritage thing. It's an Irish thing. They are a national brand. I'm not yeah. sure Alabama, for example could have their own TV network. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think LSU could either. No. Yeah, same but thing. But Notre Dame does. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, and it's Brett McMurphy who talked about Utah to the Big the Big 12 wants Colorado, Arizona, Utah, and Arizona State. Say that again? Uh, Brett McMurphy from oh. Action Network. Okay. He said that the, the Big 12's dream goal okay. is to have Colorado, Arizona, Utah, and Arizona State. Now, okay. All Utah right. hasn't taken their phone call yet because they're okay. trying to figure out what's up with the Pac-12. Well, they're waiting for Arizona yeah. State. All right, they're waiting for Arizona State. So, again, a lot of these dominoes, it seems we have a meeting every other day. Yeah, pretty much. All right, and now we're supposedly having a meeting tonight from Arizona State. And then Oregon right. and Washington, it's a concern that they have their eyes on uh, the Big Ten if those other schools join the Big 12. Correct. Yeah. So I mean, the Pac-12 the, is done. <laughs> the Pac-12 appears to be done. Uh, I, we, we've said this for a week now. There will be business classes on how the Big 12 or the Pac-12 failed. Yep. Time and time again. I mean, it's somewhere along the way, you got to make the adjustments, and they never did. Because they, they're cocky like the Rose Bowl. Like, we matter. Nah, really, no. Your schools matter, but your conference doesn't. And everybody else... Makes more money. The ACC makes more money than the Pac-12. Now, the ACC, again, maybe has not as many, obviously, but is not. I mean, Charlottesville is a small college town, right? I mean, Chapel Hill is a small college town, but that's Durham's a small college town, but that's right outside of Raleigh. Right? Clemson, Clemson is in. That's a small college. That's a small college town. It's outside of Greenville. But that's a small, Clemson itself is a small college town. Tallahassee is a small college. It's a small, it's a college town, but a capital city. Miami's not, right? Syracuse is a small city, right? Mm-hmm. And basically as big as Lafayette, for that fact of matter. If you mm. consider Lafayette a city, yeah, we, I guess we consider this a college town. Syracuse would be a college town. Okay. One's a public school, one's a private school, if that matters. 
So, you know, the ACC, I guess, has the DC. Used to have Maryland in there, right? Uh, so this is gonna this is gonna happen fast. I mean, we were kind of joking that it was gonna happen before uh, college football kicks off. I mean, camps just opened up yesterday and today. <laughs> That's horrible. Right? The Cajuns are opening up today. They so had a meeting yesterday. How do they prepare? Oh, I guess they're in the Pac-12 still this year. But, like, how do you how do you prepare for, because I know you got to start getting budgets and stuff ready for the following seasons and whatnot. How do you prepare when you don't know where you're going to be? Well, they're not, they don't have that yet. Okay. They're not probably working on that yet. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. I mean, now they're they're working on... They're just getting ready for this season. Okay, so they're just right. focused on right now. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. I heard today Brandon Marcello talking about UCLA and USC are getting the full Big Ten share next year. If Oregon and Washington go, they only get half a share. Although, how sad is that? Half a Big Ten share is more than what the Pac-12 is offering, Oof. allegedly. That's not <laughs> not great, Bob. <laughs> yeah, not great. Not great. At all. all right. Uh, and again, apparently, the offer for Apple TV is only on for the rest of the week. It seems like something new is happening. I I, I tweeted out, you know, half jokingly. I didn't tag them. I just tagged my friends, and one of them did uh, respond. Um, I said, out of curiosity, does anybody in central New York have confidence in the current leadership preventing Syracuse football from becoming a G5 program? Based on the NIL experience, they tend to be behind the eight ball. The beat writer Mike Waters responded, fans get frustrated and assign blame, but what have Syracuse officials done that's worthy of blame? Well, not nothing yet. The problem is when they end up in a G5 conference because they were not proactive, when you can see what's coming, you can see what's coming down the pike. Either get Notre Dame in the ACC, keep Florida State where they are, where the ACC is going to blow up to. If Clemson and Florida State take off to another conference, sayonara. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, so I'll so, respond to him in a second. I remember everybody a couple years ago were like, I remember some um, media person prog- uh, was trying to predict the future of college football, and he said right. it looks like it's going to be just three major conferences. Three or four and major I, conferences. And I think, we're the, right. I think we're almost there. Almost. The SEC... The Big Ten, and then it's Big gonna- Twelve, and the ACC. If you can get Notre Dame to go to the ACC for football, then that will survive. Okay, so you think the but ACC can survive? The ACC needs Notre Dame. You know who doesn't need Notre Dame? Mm-hmm. The Big Ten. Yeah. All right. So if the so- ACC doesn't get Notre Dame, you think they're they're pretty toast? Well, what is Notre Dame toast? Because Notre Dame's in the ACC outside of football. Everything yeah. outside of football. Would they go to the uh, Big Ten? Well, they're right there. Because they're academics. Right. I remember we talked about that yesterday about how... Well, the ACC academics Michigan, are, ACC academics are, are pretty good. good. No, no, no. But right, I'm just right. saying to your point about how these Big Ten schools, when you come there, you got to have good academics with you. Sure. And Notre Dame, yeah, Notre Dame is academics. outstanding academics. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, again, I'm not, I, I won't comment on Clemson and Florida State. I can take a wild guess. But, or Syracuse for that fact of matter. But Duke... Carolina, Virginia, those are all very good schools. If you're out of state, good luck. At, well, not Duke, but good luck getting into Carolina and Virginia from out of state. Those are basically like Ivy League schools from out of state. Gotcha. So those are really good schools. Um, but obviously, Notre Dame is right in the middle of Big Ten territory, right? In Indiana. So that's one. You know, we're right there. Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. Uh, but if the ACC went and got Notre Dame, then that would be... That's what they need, all right? It's not that difficult of a solution. It is a difficult thing to end up doing, apparently. Uh, So this is where we are. Let's take a timeout. We'll find out what's going on in Tallahassee. Jeff Cameron from More Chant is going to hop on with us. Coming on at 3.30, right? No, next. Oh, next. Next. Okay, cool. Cool. Excited to see what he says. Hey, kid, and a quick reminder, download the 103.3 GOAT app. Of course, it's free, and the best part is you'll always be able to hear the best sports talk in Acadiana, no matter where you are. Sports Chat Inside the Huddle and Live Rage and Cajun Sports Action. When you download the 103.3 GOAT app, you'll receive notifications on upcoming show guests, breaking news, and updated sports stories. So download the 103.3 GOAT app today and never be too far away from the best sports talk in Acadiana. Back after this, we talk conference realignment on 103.3 The GOAT.
Pardon us. Well, we butt in with a little common sense. Hey. 1033 The Goat, the greatest sports talk of all time. Hold up. You're using Swiffer Power Mop? <laughs> what would mom say? Oh, she'd be like, a mop and bucket is the only way to deep clean your floors. And I'd be like, mom, this is the new Swiffer Power Mop. The all-in-one that gets you a mop and bucket clean in half the time. She'd never believe you. I'd say, look, the solution's built right in, so no heavy bucket. And the pad has hundreds of scrubbing strips to get into grout lines. That's why you're the smart one. Really? What? Mom said it. The new Swiffer Power Mop. Don't mop harder, mop smarter. My friend and I are taking a trip to Mexico this year, but neither of us speak Spanish. So we downloaded Babbel and started learning Spanish fast. Want to start getting conversational in another language in as little as three weeks? Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons were designed by language experts to be the most efficient and effective way to learn a new language. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Babbel. Language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. These Acadiana businesses proudly support the broadcast of UL Raging Cajun Athletics on 103.3 and 1420 The Goat. News Talk 96.5 KPL. Classic Rock 105.1 and Hot 107.9. Barney's Police Supplies. Doug Ashy Building Materials. Natalie Brasso, DDS. Big Wheels, AC and Heating. And J&J Exterminating. Support these businesses that support the Raging Cajuns game broadcast of football, men's and women's basketball, baseball, and softball. Bring all the action into your home, car, smart speaker, on your phone, or wherever you work all year long. And if you'd like to learn more about becoming a UL booster, it's easy to join the winning team. Support the broadcast of UL Raging Cajun Athletics by becoming a UL Broadcast Booster. Just contact Mary Gallion by calling 337-233-6000. And we're live here outside the Perez family home just waiting for the... And there they go. Almost on time this morning. Mom is coming out the front door strong with a double arm kid carry. Looks like dad has the bags. Daughter is bringing up the rear. Oh, but the diaper bag wasn't closed. Diapers and toys are everywhere. Ooh, but mom has just nailed the perfect car seat buckle for the toddler. And now the eldest daughter, who looks to be about 9 or 10, has secured herself in a booster seat. Dad zips the bag closed, and they're off. Ah, but looks like mom doesn't realize her coffee cup is still on the roof of the car. And there it goes. Oh, that's a shame. That mug was a fam favorite. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are buckled correctly in the right seat for their age and size. Learn more at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. I'm Shanola Hampton. I support the Feeding America network of food banks because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Don't let someone get your goat. <laughs> There's plenty to go around for everyone. 1033 The Goat, the greatest sports talk of all time. All right, Seth Lewis, KATC. Coming up here at... Well, formerly KATC because well, you know you got well, a new not, job. Not yet, not yet. Yeah, he's still here for another week. Don't push him out of town just yet. I'm he's not. He does just, have a big-time job. I'm proud of him. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Going to WWL. Good for him. Uh, all right, let's talk a little Florida State uh, football. Nothing's really going on with the program. They're only playing LSU in about a month. Uh, so I figured we'd get uh, Jeff Cameron on from War Chant, the Jeff Cameron Show, uh, just to preview football because nothing else is going on, Jeff. How are you doing, man? <laughs> I am well. It is good to be able to talk about football. And you're right. Yeah, nothing else. Nothing else to see here. Let's just keep it to football. <laughs> can you, right. Can you, can you explain to me what this, uh, what is it, grant of rights thing is? Because my head hurts when I hear about those things. Yeah, it's basically a contract that uh, allows the ACC to control your TV rights through 2036. And uh, obviously, Florida State views that as a bit of an albatross because they see uh, that this is going to be financially catastrophic as we move forward with the sizable increases in, uh, you know, if you think about the annual number that conferences pay out in the Big Ten and the SEC, the very people that Florida State seeks to compete with, 
and compete with those that are trying to win a national championship. And if you're 30 or $40 million behind per season, uh, obviously do the math. It's going to be hard to compete. Yeah. All right. So I, I you find it hilarious that, um, you know, we get all these, I mean, the ACC commissioner was the key guy last week talking about how the students are athletes and it can't be about money. And now people are making it about money. Uh, Florida state not being shy about it. Does Florida state have any recourse i i feel like they're nfl running backs in this uh situation they don't they can't do anything about it it's interesting uh that language has shifted over the last year you know initially a lot of people believed that the grant of rights was ironclad that was the word or the phrase you heard used frequently i don't hear that used as frequently i hear that it would be difficult i hear that it might be uh impossible but no longer do i hear ironclad so Obviously, Florida State has sought counsel. Uh, they've, they've looked at this thing backwards and forwards. I think they prefer not to have to go to court with all of this, but they are obviously investigating to see if there's a way in which uh, there could be resolution, a number perhaps. I think this is all meant to get either, either ESPN or the conference itself or other conferences. I mean, this is a clarion call to anybody who will listen. Florida State's open for business. So why, and we're talking to Jeff Cameron from War Chant and the Jeff Cameron Show, why, why won't the ACC go, go, go get Notre Dame, which would seem to help out a lot of their issues? Is that feasible? I don't think it is. I don't think Notre Dame has any intention of ever joining the ACC. I believe Notre Dame will end up someday in the Big Ten. I don't think they've ever thought about becoming a member of the ACC. Florida State, not, not Florida State, excuse me, the, the conference has implored Notre Dame to do exactly what you're described it, uh, describing, and they've never done it. Um, so I, I don't... I just don't see that as a viable possibility at this point. Yeah, it would seem to be. I, it doesn't feel like the Big Ten needs Notre Dame, though. That's the thing. That's the difference. Well, if we end up with two super conferences and a third whatever conference that picked off the scraps with what remains, perhaps Notre Dame would think differently because at that point, scheduling becomes a problem. Right, right. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest <laughs> with you, Jeff, but you know, I'm down here in Lafayette, Louisiana. But um, I'm terrified my Syracuse Orange are going to be a, a group of five school here in, in about a month. <laughs> yeah, <see? laughs> I, think, I think many fan bases are beginning to feel that way. As we look at and read the tea leaves, we're beginning to see that obviously the Big 12 is trying to pick off teams. The Pac-12 looks like they're about to dissolve. You have a lot of people playing musical chairs trying to find a home and find a home quickly as college football's landscape shifts dramatically yet again. Yeah, I, so let's just go uh, with the presumption that Arizona and Arizona State jump ship as of, I don't know, 6.30 Eastern tomorrow. time. Yeah, tomorrow, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so then so then, what happens next? Is that when Oregon and Washington go to the Big Big Ten and then Cal yes. and Stanford go to the Big 12? Is that We're just going to get dominoes falling for the next uh, 24, 48 hours? It seems that way. It certainly looks like a major shakeup is underway. Um, if, in fact, Arizona State and Arizona leave, then, you know, what you're seeing is really the end of the Pac-12. And, you know, as a traditionalist, as somebody who likes the different regions of the country and kind of brands them in a certain way based on the conference they play in and their traditions, I hate to see this become professional football, but it looks like it's becoming professional football. Right, very much so. Uh, in terms of uh, everybody else except the players, uh, you know, <laughs> they, they're, right. they're going to start asking, right. "Hey, how much are you getting now? A hundred million dollars yeah. for being on TV? <laughs> Maybe we could pony some of that to us." Yeah, exactly. They are, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we're just along for the ride here. But uh, the realities of college football have changed a lot in the last five years. But you know, I think you can go back and say that when Southern, well, really, go all the way back to when Texas and Oklahoma jump ship from the Big 12 and, and right. joined the SEC. I think that was the beginning of the end. At that point, it became an arms race between the SEC and the Big 10. If you will, you could extrapolate that further and say it became an arms race between Fox and ESPN. Yeah, it has, uh, I mean, changed in the last couple of years. It's changed in the last five minutes. <laughs> yeah, oh, and it keeps changing. And by the time we hang up, something new will happen and it'll make our, our points irrelevant. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, yeah, you're going to be back on here in about 45, 45 minutes uh, talking to Jeff Cameron for the Jeff Cameron Show, part of War Champ. Uh, all right, let's talk a little Florida State because we'll probably have you on again to actually, you know, talk uh, college football. Right. But we, we got you on now. Um, you know, the, the, it's turned around. Uh, the, air, the coaching era there started very poorly. Uh, COVID and some race relations had some issues. Uh, but the coach has done a great job turning things around. Did beat LSU last year 
in the uh, in the Superdome, uh, and now Jordan Travis and and Florida State. You know, the winner of this ball game, if they are when the poll comes out, the winner is going to be a top five team, and I don't think it's going to be a big loss if uh, if it's a one score game. Tell us about Florida State here in twenty twenty three. Yeah, they did a really good job of roster retention, and and that's the kind of thing you look at these days with NIL being a factor. Uh, They were able to retain their top players, and they were able to bring some in, like Keon Coleman, the receiver from Michigan State, and who's an elite player to go alongside Johnny Wilson. Uh, Of course, they retained Jordan Travis, who's a Heisman candidate after an extraordinary season a year ago. Uh, Trey Benson emerged uh, at the end of last year as uh, a frontline running back. So I think the offense, frankly, will be very explosive. They've got a loaded offensive line, probably the best. I've been covering Florida State for more than 20 years. This is probably the best offensive line they've had since 2013. It may be the deepest offensive line they've ever had because they got 12 guys vying for five spots. If you flip it to the other side, they've got Jared Burris, who will be likely a first-round pick off the edge. The interior of the defensive line is deep with talented guys, all of whom will be drafted. So, you know, this is a group, I think if there's a weakness – you know, question marks a little bit uh, behind the first team linebacker unit, and there's a little bit of a question mark in the secondary. Not huge holes, but depth issues there, perhaps. But their front line starters are all really good, and I would suggest that Florida State, yeah, regardless of what happens in that LSU game, is probably a top ten caliber team, and, and really a team that thinks that they should buy to win the conference. All right, despite winning the ball game and hanging on, right, there was still a meltdown in the fourth quarter. Has Mike yeah, Norvella yeah. addressed that? I mean, you got to finish, and they, I mean, they did finish, but it's because they missed an extra point. Yeah, yeah. And well, he and Mike would tell you it was a blocked extra point so that they oh, earned it. Okay. He would tell you. But, but yeah, right. But, but having, having said that, having said that, yeah, there's no doubt they threw that, they, they potentially threw that game away. Mm-hmm. If you really go back and watch that game, the amazing part about it, and I think everybody was shocked, myself included. Um, Florida State kind of dominated that game for about three quarters. Oh, yeah, 50, they, 50 twice, minutes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And twice inside the 10-yard line and came away with nothing because of fumbles and, and, and just missed opportunities. And I think had that had they punched one of those in, that game's over with a lot of time to play. But uh, they didn't. And they had to learn how to win because, as you documented, they hadn't been very good the two previous seasons for a variety of reasons. They had all kinds of problems. It was Mike coming in in a COVID year and really not being able to get out on the road and recruit and elevate the level of talent and raise the floor and all that stuff. But they hadn't won at a, at, you know, at a, at a high level in a long time, like four or five years. So I think they had to go through some of that to grow up, to learn. And, and by getting that win and then surviving a three-game stretch in the middle of the season where – you know, you lose to Clemson, no shame in that, but you lose to Wake, and there's a lot of frustration there, but they come out the other side and they win seven straight. So I think they grew up a lot last year, and then you get all those guys back just about. I think they feel like they're ready to take another big step forward. He is uh, Jeff Cameron with the Jeff Cameron Show and War Chant. I'm sure we'll be talking here uh, when it actually is football uh, before uh, Labor Day weekend. Really appreciate your time, Jeff. Uh, or I may call you back here in 15 minutes when we, we get an update on what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my phone. I'm actually at FSU's practice right now. Oh, nice. But if you need me in, 50, if you need me in 15 minutes, you let me know. I will. Thank, <laughs> thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate your time. <laughs> Take care. Uh, all right. I mean, it is, it's crazy that this yeah. stuff is going on uh, <laughs> as much as it is. All right, let's take a time out. We may have added uh, a guest. Okay. All right. Uh, Julian Council locked on Panthers okay, for about nice. 10 minutes or so. As next. long as I... What's that? Coming up no, next. Oh, later no, no. Gotcha. Oh. It's going to be quarter to five. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's. Uh, we'll find out if anything else is going on. I mean, I mean, it's it. It really is. Outside of Taylor Swift coming to New Orleans <laughs> next October, not like in two months, October, like twenty twenty four October. Mm-hmm. You either got the conference realignment, what's going on in D.C., or Tay Tay. That's basically my whole timeline. <laughs> Tay Back after this, That's Dave funny. Schultz, Lyndon Burton, one hundred three three, the goat. If it's not the goat, then they're full of sheep. 1033 The Goat, the greatest sports talk of all time. Dwight Andrus, a division of Hub International, is Louisiana's premier employee benefits and commercial insurance brokerage. Dwight Andrus can insure just about any risk that your business faces. Dwight Andrus specializes in the construction, healthcare, real estate, and hospitality industry. 
chances are you're probably already doing business with someone who does business with Dwight Andrew. Dwight Andrew, a division of Hub International, asked to speak with Harry Pata or Brant Etier. Visit them at DwightAndrusInsurance.com. Ernie Johnson and Charles Barkley welcoming you back to Susan's Cubicle here in Accounts Payable. What an afternoon of nonstop bookkeeping action, Charles. Are you kidding me? She set herself a reminder to get out of that chair and move. That's a smart use of a timeout. She's somehow still reading her emails while getting her heart rate up and moving her muscles. Healthy habits that could lower your risk of cancer. Uh-oh, it's Karen from the IT department. This is a wrinkle no one saw coming. She means well, but she just derailed the yoga class down an accounts receivable. There she goes to one of her usual distractions. But Susan just tosses her a no-look way. That's a crazy move. Let's watch that again. She's stretching, and there's the effortless side wave. Susan's putting on a clinic. Susan from Accounts Payable, dominating. Just get moving. It helps in the prevention of so many cancers. Stand Up to Cancer and Optum want to help you reduce your risk for cancer. Visit TakeAHealthyStand.org. The mission of Paralyzed Veterans of America is clear. Accessibility. Veterans who have served and sacrificed the best of themselves deserve access to the best our country has to offer. Access to meaningful employment. Access to the veterans' benefits they've earned. Accessible homes and vehicles. And access to every part of their communities. With PVA staff working inside VA hospitals, no other veterans organization has provided more real-time, ongoing support for paralyzed veterans and their families. PVA is proud to serve veterans across all branches, all generations, and all conflicts. Our nation's heroes fought for your independence. Join PVA in fighting for theirs at pva.org. What is dedication? The thing that drives me every day as a dad is Dariana. We call him Day Day for short. Every day he's hungry for something, whether it's attention, affection, knowledge. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that when he's no longer under my wing, that he's a good person. I want him to be able to sit back one day and go, we worked together, we did a good job. That's dedication. Find out more at fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It just isn't the same without the lion. Join the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance today. Visit sdzwa.org. If it wasn't for goats, we wouldn't have coffee. Look it up. I'm going to get some coffee. You want some coffee? No, thank you. I'm fine. And the best sports talk in Acadiana. 1033 The Goat. All right, Dave Schultz, Lyndon Burton back on a Thursday Thursday afternoon sports chat, 103.3 The Goat. So the back actually feel like it's improving. I didn't feel, like, I didn't feel like it was improving yesterday. And mm-hmm. if you're not, if you don't know, I tweaked my back. Like, He's been back injured. Since Sunday. Yep. Went to the uh, urgent care center on Monday. I don't know why I waited a day. Um... But, you know, really couldn't even get out of bed, although I did. Uh, it was it was a, a painful experience. It, it improved greatly from Monday to Tuesday, but didn't feel like it improved all that much from Tuesday to Wednesday. Now it feels like the pain is specifically in one, in, in one in two spot? spot. In two spots. Okay. Okay. So that means so it's leaving. It yeah. kind of does. Mm-hmm. It kind of feels like this is, it feels like a, a previous injury. I'm glad we're now. okay. Cause, so we're getting there. Because yeah. look, this morning, I couldn't do the morning show because late last night I got an email from uh, the convention I was at saying, hey, make sure you and your whole team go get checked for COVID because they had multiple people who worked at the show who now has COVID. Luckily, I, uh, I told Blaze, I was like, hey, man, look, I don't, I don't want to get you sick, so I'm going to go get tested this morning All right. so I don't get you or Dave sick when I see Dave later today. Got tested, came back, no COVID, thank goodness. Yeah, exactly. Just a sinus exactly. infection, right. so I can come to work with that. So we'll see uh, if... Um I probably can't run. I yeah, certainly don't want to lift shouldn't. weights. 
Could I get on the bike, though? I would wait till next week. Just to well, keep... I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow. Okay. Well, I'm just letting you uh, know. And, just and let surprisingly, it get... I haven't really put on any weight. Good. That's although, good. Although I did, you know, from where I was. Because mm-hmm. you know we're getting older. And when you get older, you got it takes a little longer for recovery, excuse me. And you want to uh, be sure. fully recovered so you don't do more damage right. to your back. Correct. Because yeah. if you do more, then you're going to be coming in here with a wheelchair. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. No, we don't want to be out of commission. So, um, and in fact, today, I didn't even bring it with me. I'm on a leave. Okay. I didn't even you done take with the, pain. the most. I didn't, nice. I, I didn't take, I took the pain med mm-hmm. and the most relaxer last night. I really didn't sleep all that well. Man, you haven't been getting sleep. You would no. think those things would knock you out. Did you switch to no. PM? You see, you didn't uh, switch to PM like we talked about. But I did that Tuesday night, and that wasn't even better. That didn't help? No. Oh, no. Jeez. I mean, when I wanted to, I, I slept a long time. I mean, I went to bed at 9 on Tuesday and got up at 6. But it would be nice to conk out for the entire night. Yeah, right? play for the, so, sleep yeah. for the full night. Yep. So uh, maybe I have sleep apnea or something like that. Or who, who knows? But maybe, maybe your body just doesn't react to the medicine well in the sense of putting you to sleep. I guess so. That could be a I, thing. You know, I used to. I'm I actually out of melatonin. I take melatonin. Just oh, to sleep, so if you're so. Sl- if you're used to taking that, so, have yeah. you been taking it to go to sleep with this? No, I'm out of melatonin. Ah, see, boom. That's where that's your issue right there. Your What's, body got hooked to taking the melatonin to go to sleep. Right. Without it, it's a little harder for you to go to sleep. Eh, actually, that's why I'm scared to take melatonin. I slept. I, I slept over the weekend. I'm scared five. for that reason, and then the other reason. I don't want to take it and not wake up. That terrifies me. I know you'll wake up. I, I, I trust me. I understand. My girlfriend has given me the same face you're giving me right now of just disappointment and disgust of how do you believe that? But I believe something like if I take it, there could be a chance I don't wake up, and I don't, and that's why I don't take it. So you don't even take like Tylenol PM or something like that? No, I just take normal Tylenol when I have a uh, when it's nighttime and stuff. Okay. The All only right. nighttime, I guess, quote unquote PM I'll take is uh, Nyquil instead of you know the Dayquil, the Nyquil. I'll take Nyquil so. You know, the only problem with NyQuil for me, mm-hmm. when that wears off, you're wide awake. Yeah. <laughs> Tylenol PM, Tylenol PM, you're groggy when you wake up. No, for sure. When NyQuil wears off, you are up. You are up. That's a fact. Whether that that whether that's at 6 a.m. or at 3 Four o'clock. Yeah. No, yeah. for sure. Uh, that is a fact. So why aren't you concerned about not waking up from the NyQuil? <sighs> just because of what you just said, and I've taken it when I was... So melatonin is like a newer thing in the cultural zeitgeist of of America. Right. And I was taking NyQuil back when I lived with my parents. Right. So like, I guess I'm just used to it. And then I see my problem back. The reason I started taking NyQuil or melatonin, mm -hmm. I was stressing out due to work. Oh, okay. And I mean, literally was up all night at 130. And I was actually, I don't know about texting, but either texting or tweeting or something like that with like the person in charge of human resources she wasn't my uh, boss or anything like that I, I'm, I'm up at like two o'clock in the morning i can't get back to bed yeah what, what can i do yeah. Yeah, yeah so eventually we got to the melatonin all right uh two six nine one zero seven seven two six nine one zero seven seven you say you got a uh john emery update oh yes yes actually let me um pull that up yeah so I got today right was the first uh our, i guess our guy um Jim Nagy was in baton rouge today oh okay. i need to see if he's coming over here you want me to play it yeah it's um yep Brian Kelly talking. Okay. He, he had to finish up um, uh, an internship today. Um, uh, final. He's in great shape. Um, he has done everything. He has uh, been fabulous to work with. Uh, we're proud of uh, his accomplishments, and he'll, he'll be with us uh, tomorrow. Uh, but he had to get an internship finished up today, uh, finish that paperwork, get that turned into the registrar's office. And instead of rushing out here, you know, with his shoes untied and uh, kind of running on the field. We just said, take care of it. You've gone this far and worked this hard. Get that taken care of, and and uh, and, and that's what he's doing today. Sounds like they're getting his grades right so he can be able to play. Yeah, there's not really, for an internship, it's not really a grade. Oh, okay. Right, there's not really gotcha, a grade gotcha, for gotcha, you. Gotcha, you may gotcha, have gotcha, to write gotcha. a paper on the experience or keep a diary, but that's that's more busy work gotcha. than hard work, right? I mean, my question would be, where was his internship? Mm, yeah. well, that would have been the follow-up, right? Mm-hmm. Was he was it at a cool place? And I don't think nobody asked. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't... Is that nosy? Is that being nosy? No, no, 
I think that's a valid question. Right? I mean, it could, be in the, it could be in the state government, mm-hmm. right? Have something, a it could cool be job. for a rep. Could've it been could a radio. be for a, a cool thing. It could be radio. Mm-hmm. It could have been a cool thing in New Orleans. Is he from New Orleans or is he from Baton Rouge? Um, I feel like he's from neither of those. I feel like he's okay. from somewhere around uh, Louisiana. Let's see. I'm going to pull this up. Because I I'd spoken with um, Ricky Ronnie, the ODU coach. He was mm-hmm. on Lockdown Sunbelt. And he's like, we have some cool opportunities for internships here, right? Dest your hand. Okay, where is that? That's your hand. Is that between? I feel like that's between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. In New Orleans, yeah, I believe so as well. I'm going to pull it up on my maps real quick just because I don't know where some of these Louisiana places are. Um, yes, you're absolutely right. It's between Louisiana, um, Lord, between New Orleans and Baton Rouge. On uh, It's right off of 90, I mean, right off of I-10. Okay. It's between Laplace and Metairie. Oh, so that's that's New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah, but it's 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 uh it's That's right above, before Lake Pontchartrain. Yes, it is before Lake Pontchartrain. It's before okay. the bridge. Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay. So, uh, so maybe he had a very cool internship in New Orleans. Might you know? have. Yeah. So, no, that's what I would have been uh, listening for. Uh, so we will see about that. Jim Nagy is uh, he's our senior bowl guy, showing uh, Jeff Daniels getting in a little bit more work again. This, this just looks like he's I don't know what he's really doing. There. Maybe just doing some footwork because these guys are basically standing still and he's throwing to them oh. a little bit. I, I, he must be working on something specific. Oh, okay, okay. Because uh, he, he just players? looks like he, he just got a couple receivers out there. They're not running a route. He kind of looks like it looks like he's trying to hit a spot and the receivers are basically at the spot and, and maybe they're practicing like over the shoulder catches. Oh, okay. Oh, you're talking about Daniels, yeah, because I'm looking yeah. at the video right now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it doesn't look like he's working on, they're not running routes. No. Right. It looks like he's, it might be working on ball placement. Is that it? That's what it, it looks right. like to me, like getting it into a certain spot over the shoulder. Right. Type situation, right. working on his accuracy. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, Nagy tweeted out, good first day on the field for LSU football. QB Jaden Daniels getting in some post-practice with... Uh, work with wideouts. Daniels was the most improved QB we saw last year, and Senior Bowl expects him to make another jump in year two as starter. Amazing how quickly Coach Brian Kelly has changed the culture inside the program. That's what I love. That's what I love because as an LSU fan, I knew that when you hired Brian Kelly, this is the first time since Nick Saban that we had a guy that was about his P's and Q's and about discipline in LSU. And after everything that the the scandals that came out about Les Miles and the players he had, and then with uh, Geis and everything going on with Ogeron, this team needed discipline. And I think Brian Kelly's the best thing to happen to LSU right. since Nick Saban. And then, you, I mean, again, well, Daniel's in his fifth season. So, like, Ben Wolder's in his sixth Right, he's just taking communications classes, mm-hmm. which is really easy to do. You can do the the Burrow uh, thing where um, you uh, treat it like a business because Burrow right. was. Uh, but his, I think Burrow took grad courses. I th- his first year, I don't know about the championship year. The championship year, I feel like he was just chilling, with working on football. I, if I remember that correctly. Okay, so I'm going to say something mm-hmm. that you need to understand. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can't play college football oh, unless you're in classes. college. Yeah, fair, fair. Okay, you have to be in college gotcha. to play college football. <laughs> so I guess, I guess he was. But taking now some, they were only a couple, uh, only classes. a couple of classes. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think they were online. He never went to class. Was like, that's there was no yeah. class to go to. Okay. You know. So, that's but you have thinking. to, but you have to take the class. Sure. But I think he was taking graduate courses okay because um, i remember for sure he was like yeah this is, i treat this like if yes. i was an nfl player Correct. film all of the way that Correct. he right. did it about he was business. only taking like two he was taking mm-hmm. the minimum yep uh but he was definitely taking classes daniels i presume daniels is doing the same thing well gra- he graduated but who knows what it you know if you go from asu to oh, lsu the, the how much credits, transfers yeah. right he's yeah, in yeah, his, yeah, yeah. i mean 19 20 21 22 oh, no, this is, 23 uh, this is fifth year fifth year yeah this is fifth year so he may be Remember, a lot of these guys graduate in Early. three and a half yeah. years. I hope he does the. I hope he, for somehow. I hope he can get in contact with Burrow to talk to him how he did his schedule in the championship year, so Daniels can kind of do some of that. Treat it like a business. Well, he may not be able to. Oh, you say you think he's taking more? Oh, yeah, because of the transfer he, credits. If he yeah, hasn't, yeah, 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 if he hasn't yeah. graduated yet. Okay, let me look um, that up. I'm he sure. may. I mean, he may have to take, you know, twelve courses this semester, twelve credits, and twelve credits next semester. I don't know. He may have graduated. May have graduated in the spring. I think. Or he, the summer. Yeah, I think he did graduate. 
Okay, I'm trying to find a better um because it says he graduated early from a uh, Cajun and or so yeah, no, that's something different. I'm trying to find the right thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he's out there working and we will uh we'll c- continue to update you on uh LSU. I think we're going to I'm going to find out if we can go see a little bit of Cajun's practice That'd tonight. be awesome. That'd be awesome. I'd be there. All you? right. Uh you want to go? Yeah, I'd come. All right, because my girlfriend's working late tonight, so I'm free. So, um, and we'll go right after the show, or slightly after the show, because I think that's the only time we can go watch it. Okay. It's at 6.30. You can only usually watch the first 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Although, we are starting to see other... I mean, Florida's talking about allowing the fans to watch. We heard Wilson Alexander say that LSU is going to allow media to watch the practices. Right? I told you, South Alabama, you can watch everything. You can go the whole practice. No, because there's nobody more paranoid in maybe the entire world than college football coaches. Although it really is, can you execute? I guess it does matter if you know a play is coming. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Alabama didn't know what play was coming, and they got beat. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it would have mattered. Yeah. yeah. No, LSU knew what they were going to run, and Alabama was a mess on that play. All right, let's take a timeout. Top of the hour, Seth Lewis will hop on from KATC. We got to add Julian Council locked on Panthers. Panthers. He's going to come on uh, just before the 5 o'clock hour if I have my time zones correctly. So we got Panthers. Jeez, we're previewing. I mean, Seth's going to do Cajuns. Cajuns. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little Saints. We got Panthers. Yep. Bucks. And Chanticleers we're previewing. I mean, the idea... If we can every team before it starts. Every Sun Belt team, every SEC team, every and every NFL, NFL team. team. So far, we've done Commanders, Cardinals, Col- Colts. Okay. All um, right. And Saints. And, and, you know, yeah, Continue we, with yeah, the Saints. All we right. do Saints every day. All right. Well, back, back after this, Dave Schultz. Saints were off today, by the way. They, they true, are. true, 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 true. Back after this, we put a bow on hour number one on a Thursday afternoon sports chat. 103.3. They go. Louisiana's biggest pop culture event of the summer is back. Shreveport's Comic-Con GeekCon returns to downtown Shreveport this August. Live at the Shreveport Convention Center, August 18th through the 20th, you can meet legendary filmmaker Kevin Smith. Hey, Louisiana, it's me, Kevin Smith, and I am coming to GeekCon right in Shreveport, kids. Shreveport, Louisiana. I'll see you there. You can also meet Superman actor Brandon Rao from Doctor Who, John Barrowman, the voice of Darth Maul, Sam Witwer, Olympic gold medalist and WWE Hall of Famer, Kurt Angle, as well as stars from Steven Universe, Harry Potter, Disney, The Mandalorian, Marvel, and more. Tickets are on sale now at ShreveportGeeks.com. Don't miss the $2,500 cosplay contest this year at GeeksCon. That's right, over $2,000 on the line during the cosplay contest. Buy your tickets now at ShreveportGeeks.com. Wendy's is open till midnight or later, so you can give in to the craving and go night mode. Now all of your favorite menu items just got their bedtime extended. You can get what you want even later, like the Baconator with six strips of bacon or the Perfect Fries and Frosty Duo. If you're up later, then so are we. So go ahead and pull through the drive-thru. When the craving hits, go night mode at Wendy's. Open till midnight or later. All right, see ya later. At participating U.S. Wendy's, hours may vary. Welcome back to Total Wine. Hey, Ruthie, I need help filling the ultimate beach cooler. Well, we have the most hard seltzers and amazing canned cocktails anywhere and at the lowest prices in town. Always find what you love and love what you find. Only at Total Wine & More. Drink responsibly, be 21. Texting rolls you in recurring automated marketing text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. <sighs> Leaving for the gym so early? I'm ready to go. Since you started taking Nugenix Total Tea, you've been acting like when we met in our 20s. 20s. I feel like myself again. Lower testosterone after turning 40 slowed me down. Nugenics Total Tea has been a game changer for me. What is it about Nugenics Total Tea that's different? Well, it's a patented key ingredient called Testofin. It boosts free and total testosterone to help you get back the drive and energy from your 
youth. It's backed by five clinical studies. I've seen the huge difference it's made for you in the gym, at work, and in the bedroom. I'm so glad I sent them a text for my complimentary bottle. Text ROCK to 321321 right now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea. Nugenics is the number one selling testosterone-boosting brand at GNC and Walmart. Do it now, and we'll also send you a bottle of Nugenics Thermo X, our newest, most powerful fat burner ever. Absolutely free. Text ROCK to 321321. That's ROCK to 321321. Mess with the goat. You'll get the horns, then the butt. Because that's what goats do. 1033, the goat. Dave Schultz, Lyndon Burton. What's going on with this? Um, yeah. This is on ESPN. This was just put out. Uh, LSU's Brian Kelly injury report, proactive response to sports betting. Oh, yes. Okay. This is a story I knew I, f- I forgot to write something. He's changing the way he mentions about injuries. He said that he is bringing the NFL model to uh, college football. So apparently on Tuesdays and Thursdays, he's going to tell people something, but not give them the whole thing, and then give a final update, I guess, Saturday morning. LSU has a new, more transparent injury reporting yep. policy that football coach Brian Kelly described as a proactive response to the proliferation of legalized sports betting. Yep. For Kelly, one concern is the specter of gamblers hounding football stats for insider information. I'm not saying that happened. I'm not saying that would happen. I think it's better to be proactive in those situations and take away from even the temptation to have that in this building and not be the next school that goes down that path. The new LSU policy comes on the heels of criminal charges against current and former Iowa and Iowa State athletes, including Cyclones quarterback Hunter Deckers that stem from gambling investigations of those schools. Some of the Iowa and Iowa State players allegedly used online gambling accounts set up under other names to place bets on games, including involving those own te- their own teams. Kelly periodically has been forthcoming in the past about various players' injuries when asked, but said he wanted a more consistent policy going forward. I thought it was important, given the nature of what's going on today out there relative to reporting and gaming, we wanted to make sure that we were transparent with injuries, not putting any pressure on anybody here to guess who's in and who's out for a given game. All right, well... He's doing that for gambling purposes, but we get, you know, upper body injury, lower body injury all the time. Mm -hmm. And coaches don't want, it's not for the gambling. Yeah, it's it's for other teams. It's for the other teams. We don't want to know. We don't want them to know. Isn't it on Tuesday and Thursday? Like I said, he's doing certain things on those two days and then the day of giving the result. I think once, I think, I think, I thought the NFL was only like, like Wednesday. Okay. Right. And then it's updated or something like that. Right. It's, it's, uh. What do you have? Out, doubtful, and probable. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. What is So it? out, you're not playing. Doubtful is like 25%, and probable is like 75%. Kelly said LSU's injury reports will be released twice during the game mm-hmm. weeks and look similar to NFL injury reports. When we get to Saturday, if somebody is doubtful, we'll give you an available or unavailable. Yep. So thir- Tuesdays and Thursdays will okay. be the day he and, right. and then... Then the game day in the morning is going to do the thing. Okay. Kelly said his staff already has discussed that no one should even have a gaming app on their phone. One reason being that smartphones have geographic locators on them. True. There shouldn't be any of those apps on any of our players' phones or anyone in this building, which is a good point. Kelly also downplayed the possibility that without uniform reporting rules across college football, LSU could be at a tactical disadvantage on the field by being more forthcoming about injuries in the days leading up to games, which is what we said. Kelly said the ability to keep opponents in the dark about certain players' availability is overrated. So, which I happen to believe. I can't tell you how many times we didn't know a particular quarterback was playing. You've got to adjust on the fly. So I think it's much to do about nothing. And I think we angst over the littlest things that don't really affect the game and make too much of it. 
Well, yes. Right? It, mm -hmm. If the only way it hurts you is if you have two different quarterbacks, mm -hmm. right? If you have a running style quarterback or a pocket passer, and, you know, usually that's not the case anymore because you're still playing the entire offense, yeah. right? So I, if you say, well, if they don't know he's starting, all right, but they're going to find out like after the first play of the game. True. true, it's, true, it's, true, not true. Like, it's not like, you know, a baseball lineup, although you got to know that before the game, right? Or softball. Softball is a better example, right? Like you don't know softball either. Softball, they don't tell you. True, 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 true. Well, I don't want it to be a situation where it causes a something to the point where somebody loses their job or somebody loses eligibility. I mean, that's a bigger issue than, well, we got a tactical advantage because we found out he was playing. So, all right. Uh, all right. So that's an interesting point that Brian Kelly is doing. He does make a point that it is, uh, that it doesn't have anything to do with um, the opposing teams. And that's made a bigger deal out of it. Oh, and now we got, what do we got? We got Paul versus Diaz this week. Yeah, I think so. You're going to buy it, aren't you? Uh, no, I'm going to watch it. Um, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to pirate. Got I'm it. I'm going to be on the seven seas on okay. TikTok. Literally on TikTok, there's people who go on live and put the fights just live on air. I haven't right. bought a fight in so long just because I'm on right. TikTok. Right, right, right. Last week, Corner Bar had. Nice. You going to go to Corner Bar watch it? Good. Paul and uh, Diaz, don't do that. It's going to be a whack fight. <laughs> it, Is Diaz it going to be on a lot him. earlier than Poye, though? Mm. Poye didn't get on there until like 11. How many How many openers are there? Let I me see. Yeah. We'll have to figure out that when we come back. Also, right. I have an update on the uh, when we come back about the gambling guy. I, there, people are posting videos of what he did on TikTok. Oh. It's bad, Dave. Okay. All right. Uh, we got Seth Lewis coming up from KATC on a Thursday afternoon sports chat on 103.3 The Goat. Thirsty for intelligent sports talk? Sounds like you need a little go to Ray. 1033 The Goat. The greatest sports talk of all time. Lafayette Roofing, from the roof to the roots of Acadiana. We know issues with your roof can be intimidating and maybe even expensive. But not if you call Lafayette Roofing. Big or small, we handle it all at a price you can afford. We also offer our standard five-year labor and materials warranty. Lafayette Roofing takes pride in being in the heart of Acadiana and the official roofing company of your rage and Cajuns. So if you need a roof, who else would you call? Call Lafayette Roofing. Our name says it all. 237-ROOF. That's that's 237-7663. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hi, I'm Connie Britton, and I want to share with you the experience of Donna in Washington. She writes, I got injured about five years ago. I was let go when, because of the injury, I couldn't keep up with my schedule. I've tried to find other work, but I'm 68 now. No one wants to hire someone that old. This week is tough, though, because I had to get my tooth fixed. So I only have $10 in my checking account. But it will be okay. I at least have food because of this pantry. Millions of people face hunger. Some every day, just like Donna. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. My son Finn was born with congenital heart disease, causing him to spend the first eight months of his life in the hospital. During that time, he endured 10 surgeries, including an open heart surgery. Starlight Children's Foundation has played an important role in my family's life. For five weeks when he was a baby, Finn lived in a Starlight Hero wagon, 
you could not understand the pure joy of having him go from a hospital bed into his favorite red wagon, especially when he was so little. The support that Starlight provides to families like mine is an integral part of creating happiness at a time when there's very little to be found. Learn more about how the Starlight Children's Foundation brightens the lives of sick kids by visiting starlight.org today. Every second counts in a poison emergency. That's why Poison Help is standing by 24-7 to provide free assistance in over 100 languages. Save Poison Help as a contact in your phone today. Poison Help. 1-800-222-1222. 